Hello everyone, this is Mandra Zadoh from SITCOE. Today we are going to discuss regarding mechatronics. So basically mechatronics is the interdisciplinary branch which deals with automation and how that is done it will be covered in this course. So today of this course we are going to go through the introduction. So sorry so the objective of today's lecture is to study mechatronic systems its elements advantages practical examples of mechatronic system and outcome of this video will be the student will be able to explain mechatronic system its elements advantages disadvantages and practical examples of mechatronic system so let's start with the introduction basically what is mechatronics the word mechatronics is made up of two different terms one word of this is mechanics and the other one is electronics so mecha from mechanics and tronics from electronics is clubbed together to form one term which is mechatronics this term was first uh, referred by one japanese engineer called as tetsuso mori in 1969 so it will it is very uh, old term actually and the definition of mechatronics can be explained as the synergistic integration of mechanics electronics control theory and computer science within product design and manufacturing in order to improve and or optimize its functionality so basically mechatronics will be an interdisciplinary branch which will be involving different disciplines of engineering like mechanical engineering electronics engineering control engineering computer science engineering all will be integrated in one branch which is mechatronics and this we are going to use to improve some, some system or design some automation system so this Venn diagram you are uh, looking at the screen will explain the integration of different branches here uh, we can see mechanical technology electrical technology and computer technology so these are three basic uh, branches and the clubbing of all these will give us a mechatronics which is interdisciplinary approach and uh, so we involve all branches in one that is mechatronics now on the screen we are looking at a typical mechatronic system and different elements of that system so basically there are different six different elements right now we are looking at so very first is a mechanical system which will be made up of two elements sensors and actuators then input signal conditioning and interfacing then digital control architecture then output signal conditioning and interfacing and lastly graphical displays so basically what we are looking at is a mechatronic system a typical mechatronic system so any system may have these all components or it may have one less that is in many systems we can't find graphical displays but basically these are the components uh, we will go through these components one by one so as we know we are going to use an uh, mechatronics or a mechatronic system for an automation so automatic system will work like this uh, it will take some input from the environment it will process it and it will produce some output so that is total an automatic system so here the input will be taken from the sensors so sensor is a sensing device which will provide physical change in the environment to the system so sensors are different type of uh, elements as mentioned here those may be strain gauges uh, like for uh, measurement in ch uh, measurement of change in force or pressure we can use strain gauges thermocouples uh, we know thermocouples are used for measuring change in temperature, accelerometers, yes, again, MEMS, switches, potentiometers, right. 
So, these are the different sensors to measure or to sense uh, the physical changes from the body or a system which can be uh, again a mechanical type of change which is converted to different form of the energy like thermocouple will sense the change in the temperature and it will convert that uh, change in temperature in form of an electrical signal. Okay. So, that is a sensor and again it will measure the physical change. So, it is included in mechanical system. Then the uh, signal from the sensor will be fed to input signal conditioning and interfacing device. Uh, these may be an amplifiers or some filters or some analog to digital converters and there the signal will be conditioned according to the requirement of a digital control architecture. Again a digital control architecture that is, that is the heart of the system will be having a microprocessor or a microcontroller or a PLC that is pro programmable logic controller. Uh, here we can find some programs like sequencing and timing logics and arithmetics control algorithms communication logic circuits all are incorporated. So, basically we are going to provide a program in these digital control architectures and it will take inputs from sensor through signal conditioning devices it will process those signals or it will run the program according to the inputs received. Then the program will uh, provide some output again which is given to the output signal conditioning and interfacing devices like again D 2 A converters, amplifiers etcetera and those will be either displayed as an output or will be provided to actuators. Actuators again are uh, part of a mechanical system they will be uh, a DC motor or stepper motors, servo motors, hydraulic actuators, pneumatic actuators or some solenoid operated valves or coils of solenoids which will again operate valves in the system. Uh, so, that is an output physical change happened because of the motion of these things. So, basically this is a typical mechatronic system. If we take an example of thermocouple, uh, sensor will be thermocouple which we know uh, some thermocouple will be used for sensing the temperature change of the system. It will provide us an electrical output uh, which is in form of few millivolts. So, we know thermocouple works on Seebeck effect and that output from the sensor which is few millivolts it is an analog signal. So, what is the work of input signal condition system is here is it will convert that millivolt signal by amplifying to some volt few volts of the signal and again analog to digital convert converter will convert that analog signal to digital form as the digital control architecture will only understand the digital signals we need to convert analog signals to digital signals. Then the digital signals will be fed to program and the program will be executed by the digital control architecture and it will give us some output and that output will be again converted from digital form to analog form which is again understandable by actuators An actuator will actuate and the process will be controlled. Okay. So, this is a typical mechatronic system. If we take an example of air conditioner as we are talking about the temperature change. So, according to this uh, sense uh, change in the temperature of the room, uh, uh, the mechatronic system can control the flow of refrigerant in the air conditioning system uh, to get a high or low temperature as per the setting given by the operator. Okay. So, we will again discuss few practical examples later on. So, basically in mechatronic system we are going to study two different systems, one is measurement system, the other one is control system. Firstly measurement system, the work of measurement system is to measure only whatever is to be uh, changing or uh, 
um, one quantity which to be measured like here in this example the diagram is given of a thermocouple so thermocouple is a sensor or it is also called as a transducer so this makes sensor part then the next part is signal conditioning part that is amplifier and a to d converter and lastly the display here this is only measurement system we are not going to control anything any parameter so it will just sense the temperature of the surrounding it will display that temperature so this is called as a measurement system thermocouple will sense the temperature change it will produce some millivolt of signal that is fed to signal conditioning device that is an amplifier where that millivolt signal is amplified to few volts and it is fed to a to d converter where it will be converted into a digital form and later on it is given to a led display so here it is a seven segment display so it will just record that temperature and it will display the temperature whatever the temperature of the system is so it is measurement system here we are not going to control any parameter the other form or other type of the system is control system again it is sub classified in open loop system and closed loop system both the systems are shown on the screen so in open loop system there is one process it will take few inputs and accordingly it will provide some output so here uh, we are not having any control on input as well as output so whatever are the inputs are given to the process it will be processing it and it will providing an output so we cannot uh, have here a desired output whatever uh, inputs are provided accordingly we will get outputs so we cannot control the output here as it is open loop system and uh, what the main difference between open loop and closed loop system that in closed loop system a feedback is provided uh, from the output that is uh, inputs are given to the process process will uh, be executing and some outputs are provided and those output are again fed as an input so that uh, it will correct uh, the inputs according to the required outputs so whatever outputs are required continuously the feedback is provided at the input and the, the difference between the desired output and uh, the present input will be continuously monitored and uh, we will get the desired output at the last by using this feedback loop so that is the control system so that was regarding the typical mechatronic system its parts next that is advantages of a mechatronic system okay why we need to go for an automation or mechatronic system uh, preferred over the conventional systems because mechatronics or automation system will be cost effective and a good quality it will provide us a cost effective and good quality product okay then it will be having high degree of flexibility to modify our design okay basically uh, mechatronic system will be involving uh, digital control architecture where there will be microprocessor or microcontroller or plc uh, which are programmable devices and we are going to provide programs according to our requirement to the that digital architecture so if there is uh, any problem in the system we can redesign or modify the program and we are going to uh, we will uh, have an iteration so that we can get desired output continuously so we need not change the whole system by only changing the program which is fed to this uh, central part uh, we can uh, change the total output of the system again it has very good performance characteristics wide area of application so mechatronics will cover a wide range and wide area of application we are going to go through that uh, it is having obviously great productivity and greater extent of machine utilization we can use machine to the greater extent so these are few advantages of a mechatronic system then obviously every coin has two sides so these systems are having few disadvantages which are mentioned here basically high initial cost cost will be definitely high uh, for the implementation of mechatronic system either a new system or modification of old system in mechatronic system both will uh, involve high initial cost definitely it will pay back uh, after some time but 
initially we need to um, invest more for automation next that multidisciplinary engineering background must be required for design and implementation as mechatronics is an integration of different branches one must know the basics of all the branches for designing of such mechatronic system knowledge of mechanical engineering also will be uh, known electronics engineer must be known control engineering and also software engineering all uh, disciplines will give an input to this mechatronics so we need to know knowledge of all these branches obviously for maintenance we need highly trained workers because again that complexity of the system and uh, integration of different uh, branches is there and lastly error identification and correction is complex task obviously if there is any fault in the system uh, anyone cannot correct that fault as the one who has installed the system will be knowing as there is uh, huge amount of wiring will be present so trained worker must be involved in such activities that those are the few disadvantages of the system nextly some practical examples which can be seen on the screen so very well known and uh, seen example is washing machine now it is uh, nowadays it is found in each and every household majority times so fully automated washing machine what we do here is we just uh, provide the clothes dirty clothes and detergent and water to the washing machine and it will do its task only the setting is to be done uh, for how many uh, minutes we are going to run the machine and once you provide uh, once you select the cycle so different cycles for different types of clothes are available in washing machine uh, we choose one of the cycles and then we start the machine it will uh, wash the clothes by itself and again it will again dry also the clothes and it will provide us washed and dried clothes cleaned clothes so that cycle uh, is um, based on the sequence of the uh, different operations which are automated then next that is uh, figure to the uh, left side of the <coughs> left upper corner is the rover uh, different rovers which are sent by different space agencies in the space like on mars or on the moon uh, to study the surface and the atmosphere of that planet or satellite so that is uh, we know how those works those are all mechatronic components are fitted on the system and uh, we cannot uh, manually control because it is at a very far distance from us so we need to control it uh, only through the signals and the system will itself uh, work according to the program fed to this system then at the bottom part the figure it's showing the welding arm so robotic welding arm is provided uh, so obviously it will work on the program as the path is provided to it uh, we can see such uh, robots in the automation lines uh, for the mass production or manufacturing sectors uh, welding robots are there spray painting robots are there okay so basically these are used in automation then again different uh, one of the famous examples is the robotics uh, of mechatronics so in the robotics we have we are already knowing different robots uh, manufactured by different companies so here there are two pictures one is of legged robot that is uh, the replica of a human or a spider is seen on the screen so these are the robotic uh, replicas or we can say products um, which will act like the human and the uh, famous example of the sophia robot which is a humanoid robot so it has its own uh, intelligence it will answer your questions according to whatever is asked so it is also a robot and um, basically these are all examples of a mechatronic system 
we can find the basic elements of that microelectronic system in each and every uh, figure here. Thank you.